to walk the streets at 16 by yourself, chasing a dream that not even your blood relatives no. believed in. No, um, Shopsidu, I won't lie to you. It's um, Wiz. Mm. You know, Wiz is a king. Hey, you know, big fish. <laughs> Wiz sparked Biggest that fire. Mm -hmm. Sparked that fire in me. You ask me where I get all my energy from. From the stage, to the studio, and to my desk. I am the energy god. And you can be one too. You're listening to Adi Shokwe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Shopper Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here at the Afri Media Studios in London. As always, thank you very much for your subscriptions. We appreciate it. The numbers are going up and up. And as I say every single time, we need the numbers to go up so we can promote our culture without waiting on anybody else to promote us. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button, the like button, share it with somebody else, and ask them to subscribe. My name is Adesho Puyolaji. I'm your host of this podcast presented to you by the Energy God, Energy Drink. Make sure you drink and be yourself. Stay energized. This is the official energy drink of Afrobeats. We said so. Uh, make sure you grab it or go to the energygod.com. Now, this is the podcast where we break down the hottest topics in the culture. And sometimes we're joined by a special guest to tell us their story and share beautiful moments with us. This today is is another special one because we've got one of the young rising stars out of Nigeria in the building. First time in the United Kingdom, spent four days already. His British accent is uh, a little bit deeper than mine. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? Give it up for Majid! <laughs> Majid, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Shopsy do. Listen, <laughs> accent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, you said you should spend four days here. Yeah. I'm looking at you. You're, you're dressed, you know, you're swagged out, your skin's fresh. It looks like you've been living here all your life. Yeah, I'm a London boy in, in my spirit ever <laughs> since, you know, but now in person. I think I have to, uh, I have to adapt to the London um, everything. Everything. Stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, in it. <laughs> Listen, um, your story is one that has always caught my ears, particularly over the last two years. Um, I have someone in my camp, shout out to Babs who has been an advocate of you going on two years now, since you mm. caught the attention of the international base of Afrobeats here yeah. during the pandemic, yeah. when we're all listening, streaming, looking for what's new. Yeah. But I know that, you know, overnight success really means a minimum of seven years in the game. Mm. So you definitely been somewhere mm. before the spotlight came. Talk to me a little bit about who Majid is and where you're from. Uh, honestly, um, Shops to do. I'm gonna be honest with you. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's really been a roller coaster of emotions for me. Hmm. Right, it's been very, very, very. The industry these days, the industry now is very toxic. Right, when I mean toxic, hmm. I mean. Uh, you have to be able to give something to get something. Mm. It's never free. Nobody actually loves you, loves you like that. Mm. It's just, they say something you about Ujuaye. I don't know, I don't know the translation, but I think it's... That basically means, you know, fake friends. Yes, yes, exactly. So ever since I've, I've been a writer, on code, like, on code, on code, when I realized that the only way to get somewhere in this industry is by offering something that the artist needs. Mm. Do you understand? But most artists, most young artists, when they meet other artists that are bigger than them, they want to, they want to show that they are artists. But the, the thing is, artists don't like artists. They want to feel comfortable yeah. in that circle. So they don't want another... They don't want another artist. They don't want to say... If, they, if you say you're an artist, they've zeroed you away from their mind. If you say, th say anything about you featuring them, they'll dodge you. So basically, when I realized that, because I've lived with a whole lot of A-list artists. Mm. Like, I've lived with them. I've seen their lifestyle. I've seen how it goes. I've seen how they act. Like, I lived with... 
um, skibi. Hmm. I lived with Maestro Sugar. <laughs> you know, when I start mentioning Those are two people. names <laughs> that are very close to me. Those are guys that I've mentored in this game for years. Sure to do. Immediately yeah. came from my hands. <laughs> Maestro Sugar. Came that, from my hands. Maestro Sugar. That guy, yeah. Maestro Sugar is a kingmaker. Right? Me, most people don't give credit to Maestro Sugar. But Maestro Sugar, he's so dear to my heart. Like, anywhere I go in the world, I can never forget that that guy, Maestro Sugar. Maestro Sugar is one of the person that brought me out of nonsenseness. <laughs> when I mean nonsenseness, he, he saw potential in me. Like when nobody did, he saw major potential in me. He brought me out, he took me to his place, told me, yo, you can stay in my place. So I know you're, 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 you're trying, you're trying, but I see potential in <laughs> you. I want to work on you. Nobody has ever said that to me. When I when I've been on like the journey of this music thing, nobody has ever said that to me. He said that to me. It was it touched me, right? And, and what most people don't know is Maestro has created a lot of kings these days. Absolutely, Absolutely. Lokio. I know. I, I know a lot of people that came through Lokio, that. Lokio, Lokio. Like nobody, nobody even knows. But another thing is credit. Nobody wants to give credit to whom credit is due to. Hmm. Nobody is ready to say this person helped me. This person helped me. Everybody wants to come out like I did it on my own. But it's not possible. You you always have backbones. Mm. You always have backbones. I lived with Skibi for how many months? Eight months or a year with Ashake. He he just his interview is about to come out where he said Ashake was living with him. Yeah. We lived together like for a year plus doing stuff, vibing, recording stuff. I'm grateful for where everybody is today. Fireboy safe. Yeah, because <laughs> Maestro told me Fireboy yeah, was... Yeah, Fireboy safe. When I saw Fireboy carrying speaker and all, like, I bought... Hey, shops do. But how did you get there? That's my thing. Yeah. Where did you come from? Where were you born and raised? And <laughs> how did you get there? Let's let's start where you were born yeah. and raised and, and, and where the music started kind of hit from. you. Yeah. So basically, I, I was born in um, Lagos State. Mm. Then I moved to Ogun State with my family when I was like eight years old. And I've been living in Ogun State till I was 15 and I started at university. Then I- What uni? Um, it's Combini University in Kotonou Bene Republic. Okay. Yeah. Je parle français, MP MP though. You speak French? MP MP. You do? Yeah, MP MP. Bro, your money's in France. Ah, Don't mess small. with it. I speak French small small. Really? <laughs> yeah. You need to go France, get your <laughs> Schengen. That's where the money's at, but keep talking. <laughs> yeah, so uh, ever since then, I left school for Festac, mm. where the journey started. And I was with the producer, Popito. Mm. Right? Popito. Popito, at that point, when I was, I was very, very young on the streets where I knew nobody, Festac. That's where I started from. And I used to run errands, go buy petrol and stuff. Then there was one day Popito was surprised when I was recording myself. He said, ah, this boy, what did he do for my laptop? I said, ah, I didn't record myself. He said, what did you? I said, I didn't watch you when you did record them scales, record them um, Timaya. I didn't watch you when you did record them. Now we, now we I take Lenam from me that. He was very surprised. And ever since then, I was recording them W4, them, them, <laughs> I was recording them um, <laughs> scales, recording some artists by myself. And they were enjoying my vibe. They always tell Poppy to, ah, we'll be this guy. Uh, I like the way they record me. You know, get stressed in the putting mine down. Then ever since then, I left. I left Popito, um, Popito's studio because the vision was too big. Right? There was something always pushing me. Always, always pushing me. Like, bro, bro, you can do this. You can do this. Go, explore, go, explore. I came to the island. Hmm. Lagos, lucky to be precise. Move, move close to the mic. I don't want to lose that juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky to be precise. Where my eyes saw Shaggy and Shaggy back to back to back. Back to back. <laughs> Shops to do things I did, things I've done for the music is, is um, unspeakable, mm. right? When I left um, Popitos, 
uh, it was hard because I knew nobody on the island. I had a friend that was squatting with his sister. I stayed for there. I stayed there two days, but I had to leave. After I left, I had nowhere else to go, so I had to like stay in like uncompleted buildings for like a straight one week. Trying at to like how old? At I think I was sixteen at the time. Damn it! What about your family? That what's, what's <laughs> That's the, the thing, shops to do. Like, what's the family saying? Shops to do. I cut my family off. Because of this music. Because game. of this music, I cut my family off. I had to break my SIM card. It was hard for them to reach me because I wanted it. I wanted. To, I wanted it to be when I want to reach them. I reach them. They don't reach me. But shops to do. You know, eh? When the dream is too big, not everybody can see. They call you crazy. They think you're a psycho. They think you're a black sheep of the family. <sighs> who was your ins <laughs> like? Who inspired this music dream? What, where did you catch the bug? What did you see? When did this vision come that he became so strong that you had to walk the streets at 16 by yourself, chasing a dream that not even your blood relatives no. believed in? No, um, Shops to do, I won't lie to you. It's um, Wiz. Mm. You know, Wiz is a king. Hey, you know, big fish. <laughs> Wiz sparked Biggest that fire. Sparked that fire in me. Sparked that fire in me, Shops to do. And ever since then, I've been on the road. I've been on the journey. I've been on the journey, even if it was hard. Because mm. I'm a kind of, I'm, I'm a person that if you... Show me something. Just show me. Ah, what I would, I would master that stuff, master it even more than you. Do you understand? So, I think <laughs> we sparked that fire in me, gave me the motivation that yo, you're young. You can do anything you set your mind to do. Anything you set your mind to do. Don't box yourself. Don't let society box you. Right. That's. That's the only thing I always fight for. Society always box us all, always let us know, eh, if you do this, and our parents too, yeah, yeah. African parents. Because that's what they knew. You know, African parents. They didn't see the success from the creative industry. They, yes. were, they didn't grow up at the era where, you know, music and entertainment was exactly corporate and business. Yes. What they saw is, you know, uh, legends like King Sonny Ade and whatever having 200 wives or whatever with all due respect <laughs> you know what I mean those are our parents they yeah. thought once you go into the game it's all about women and children <laughs> it can't be about women but <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 well let's get back to it like you started learning the basics yeah. engineering production but the one thing that kept coming around your name when you eventually caught the spotlight was the songwriter. Yeah. Talk to me about the transition to that and how easy that is for you because that's one of the most... Rihanna probably hasn't written a song by herself in 15 years. <laughs> so it's clear that some of the biggest musicians stay as far away <laughs> from songwriting yeah. as possible. Just give me the song, let me translate it. So how did you get to that? And how easy, how comfortable are you doing that? Uh, when I was with Popito, the the energy to always write. I've always been like um, a literature student. So when I write, I want to make sure that you understand and it's easy for you to assimilate. Mm. And it's a different melody you've never heard before. So it sticks in your head. I'm not, I'm not going to write you basic stuffs. I'm not going to write you, oh, I love you, baby. And I'm mm. not going to do that. I'm going to take your mind on a journey. And when you come back, you say, ah, who is this stupid boy? Who is this idiot boy? So basically, funny enough, I have ha archives for Rihanna, though. I have an archive that I have for Rihanna, like Rihanna's archive, Post Malone's archive, uh, and Harry Styles' archive. I have archives for everybody that I've written songs for. Ten, ten songs each. That the music is down. That the music is down. When that I just we, see what you. We just, need to, we just need to find Pitch a way it. to get to them. That's all. And it's insane. Insane records. Records that people haven't heard me do before. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. 
workshops do. Yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can make, we can make some things happen. Ah, we you know need to mean? make it happen. We can, we can, we can definitely set some connections in motion. Do you write based on your experiences, or can you look at me and be able to write for me? I'm an empath, so I, I feel, I feel it from my soul. I can look at you and write for you. Mm. If I listen to your music, I understand where you're coming from. I know your direction. I know what you can do. I know the pitch you can go. I know, but I can, I will force you, force your vocal cords to take some certain notes that you didn't even expect yourself to take. Because you think that I can take it. Because I know you can take it. Mm. I'm a mentor. I'm a mentor, Shopsy. I'm a mentor. I mentor a lot of people on code that I know. I know they are looking up to me. I know, but you know, in this life, not everybody wants to let you know some certain things. They rather keep it to themselves. So I know I'm a huge mentor. Huge mentor. This songwriting is the only thing I know that I can use to, you know, build relationships. Mm. Build strong relationships. Strong, important relationships. Songwriting. Because if I, if I push, put myself as an artist, 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 I'm an artist too, a great one, a great performer, amazing performer. Most people haven't seen that side of me yet. I'll show everybody very soon. But Perfect. songwriting is the only way I know I can create that strong bond with like artists. And how, is it, how important is it for young up-and-coming artists, you know, to have something that they can offer? You know, talented people yeah. to be in their circle. How important is it? It's Whether you are an engineer yeah. or you are... You have to have value now. Mm. If you're not adding value, you are just like... You are... You're a blood sucker. <laughs> you're a blood sucker. Ah, that's that's the word. You're a blood sucker. You're a time waster. Hmm. You're a bingo. Hmm. I don't know if that one goes. Oh, go. Uh -huh, go have you. You're a bingo, yes. So, <laughs> if you're not adding value, if you're not a mix engineer, if you're not a producer, if you're not... If you don't play instruments, at least add something to that music to give it life, basically. So I think every creative t should um, try to master a skill. Because mm. artists these days, they just want to sing. They think it's overnight. That's the annoying thing. Like upcoming artists think it's overnight. I met one guy, one young boy, 12 years old, 14 years old. He said um, a rapper signed him, an American rapper signed him that the rapper is coming to take him to America to school. I'm like, bruh, what are you yeah, talking man. about? I had to contact the rapper. I contacted the rapper. I'm like, bro, if you know you're not going to do this thing for this guy, don't, like, don't, 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 don't do this. This boy is too young. He's going to school here in Ikorodu. He doesn't need you to distract him. Do you understand? So don't come to Ninja and come and give promises that you're not going to fulfill. Just leave the boy alone. Let him concentrate. The boy is saying, eh, he said he will come back and buy a house for my mom. <laughs> and buy my own house for me. Yeah. I'm like, bro, what are those you talking are the, about? Those are, those are the dreams, you know. Oh. Unfortunately, with success of Afrobeats and some of the biggest stars that we've seen, yeah. it also means that a lot of people hallucinate and believe that yes. this thing was overnight. I, I saw Wizkid 12 years ago, you know, on Smith's couch. Hmm. You know, that's where I met Whiskey. He had come in to do a club here in London. Yeah. With barely 300 people. Hmm. So when you see people like us excited about the greatness that this young man has achieved, know that we've been there yeah. alone. We've seen yeah. every single growth. Yeah. With all the other things that have affected the industry, affected him, still kept on inspiring still. And, and now he's at a stadium status in the UK mm. I can't count how many whiskey tours that I have witnessed here mm. <laughs> so the amount of work that it that it takes 98% of the music industry particularly in Nigeria do not have it. No. That's why 
you're always going to mention certain names over the last 15 years. Exactly. Yes. You know, Olami De Bado, Wiz Kid. Exactly. Because they are in that top 2%. Yes. You know, so a lot of people don't get that. Now, I see some of the writing credits. I've seen you with legends like Tiwa Savage. Yeah. You know, I've seen you write with other people, greats like <laughs> Kiss Daniel, you know. Talk to me, just give me little nuggets about being, what it's like being in a creative session with a Tiwa Savage or with a Kiss Daniel. Because I, I, I've heard stories about Kiss Daniel. Like, he's next level. Go to law. <laughs> he's... Law. On the next, you know, but give us a little insight about some of these greats and what it's like for you to be there, you know, adding value to what they've created. Uh, so to be honest, Shopsy, um, I respect my space, my creative space mm. so much. And um, if I'm to make the music or if I'm to write music, I love my space so much. So... I'm not always around them. Mm. So you create in your own. I create in my own space. And then share. It and I it. share. Here you go. What do you think? You like it? You don't like it? Okay. I will go back to my space. That's good. Because I feel like my space is where I receive Rema from. Where I'm able to speak to myself. And where I'm able to connect to the future fans. Mm. 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 You can have vision from there. You can have vision from your space. Because when you're when you're when you're in the same space with them, some things might just Stop ourselves go affect. Yeah, some some kind of things will just shake you off your balance. Shake mm. you off. Yeah. So I prefer being in my own space and writing from my own space than sending. Who are some of these names? I mentioned Case, I mentioned Siwa Savage. Who else have you? kind of being in that is out there known because I know that some people don't like the fact that you know yeah, writers so that, mention their names as yeah. well <laughs> how are you going to cross that hurdle why is there negativity attached to superstar artists having writers I'm, I have no idea why I have no idea and, and I don't know how why it's even hard for that's why I love Tiwa Sad Mm. Like, yeah, this is a global superstar. T1. Yeah, come on, man. I call oh, that a legend for... I know why I call that a legend. T1. That's a global superstar. Ooh. You know, that's a global... She didn't come from the Nigerian Afrobeat industry. She came from the international industry. Tiwa Savage was known in the UK. Yes. Tiwa Savage was in LA, Hollywood. Tiwa Savage is not somebody that's, like, in a myopic world. That yes. She's written... Grammy nominated songs. Damn. Let me say it again, in case you didn't know. Damn. Tiwa Savage has written a Grammy nominated song for Fantasia. Go to Google yes, and Google. Yes, Fantasia. So Tiwa Savage has worked with George Michael. Tiwa Savage has worked with, you know, Mary J. Blige. So <laughs> don't get it twisted Ooh. by, you know. <laughs> what what you see on social media and what you hear at, Ni at Nigeria or whatever, and she went, mm, this is a global superstar. Tio. She knows how the game is being played internationally. So that's why she's comfortable in bringing close and giving right. credits. And giving credit. Mm. I think the songwriting community needs to, it's a different, it's a different community on its own. So it's still ghostwriting in Nigeria. It's not it's still writing. ghostwriting. And it's annoying. <laughs> it's, it's very much annoying, Ushopsi. It's yeah. annoying because yeah. there are lots of amazing writers. I have a, um, um, I have a um, writing academy, right, where I scout for young, amazing How vibrant. old are you? Ah, the young shall grow, Ushopsi. You're in your 20s? Yeah, I'm in my 20s, early 20s. Early 20s? Yes. And you already have an academy? Yes. The vision that's, that's brilliant. Obviously, I have amazing young boys that are very good in writing, very, very good, that's fantastic good. boys. That's that very good. Once they drop, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying as much as possible to make them understand that it's different for you to be a king and a king maker. 
there's a difference between these two. Sometimes when you are a songwriter, it's not necessarily sacrifice. Yes, it's not that you need to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So don't try to lean towards that angle. Listen, um, Neo was a songwriter for years yeah. before he came out. Yeah. Jason Derulo was a songwriter for years yeah. before he came out. Yeah. And both of them had written, you know, platinum singles yes. that made a lot of money before yeah. they individually came out as musicians. So it's a great way to start and look at you now. You've transitioned, you've put out your own EP yeah. um, last year. Yeah. Shout outs to you, by the way. <laughs> the record time, I think Ooh. that's the one that really, really grabbed me by the throat. Oh, wow. You know, the music is good. I like, I, I, I get your sound. I think your beat selection is yeah. also very unique. It's yeah. very young and fresh. And I hear the storytelling. Um, and then time just, for me, it's, ju it's just crazy. You know, it's just a crazy record. You, you know, the fact that, was that your mom on, on, yeah, on the preface? Yeah, it was my real mom. Your mom, you know, talking into that record. Yeah. Just gave that record so much power, you know. And then fast forward to 2023, you you have been working and being around greatness in 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 Queen T was Savage. Yeah. You put her on a on a record. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know how how do you even ask one of the greats of the game that would you like to feature on my record? Or does she make the phone call, or did you have to ask? So basically, um, Tiwa and I, we have this energy, mm. this very, very strong energy that um, I just need to call her and just speak to her, and that's it. Mm. Do you understand? So <clears throat> uh, I think when the, the bond grew was when um, I wrote this No Wahala, Verse. Um, verse for her. The hardest verse. <laughs> no, that verse. You did something, something. Nah, she went in on that record. Yeah. So yeah, afterwards, um, now, yeah. we've been working, we've been working she and working. That then uh, <laughs> I was I was recording him and. Um, I just went to her. She was there pressing her phone and stuff. I just went to her. I'm like, I'm half an hour. You okay? You good? Because we like to speak accent to mm. ourselves. So mm. you okay? You good? You all right? <laughs> she said, yeah, she's good. What do I want? I said, mama, come on. I'm recording something. I want you to hear. What do you think? Then I put the headphones in her ears. And she was like, see pressing her phone. And she just said, <laughs> she said, Majid, record me, yo. Record me, yo. I'm like, Mama, I, I don't want to record you. I just said, yeah. At the end of the day, I recorded her and uh, she blessed me, blessed the record with her amazing, 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 amazing vocals. I love Tiwa so much. She's, she's an amazing big sister to me, big sister to me. And I'm grateful for everything she's been doing, mm. all the credits. All the love she's been showing, the smallest of love she's been showing, the everything I'm grateful for Tiwa. She is really an amazing person, rare to find, very rare to find. That we you know, I know the fans. Some of us were very angry. You know what I mean? You know when we saw the video where you know I, I've got to make it clear we, the Tiwa Savage fans and the community, yeah. you know we we were very angry because we didn't know the relationship you had. <laughs> that you could hold our Tiwa <laughs> that you? way. Ha. So you, you, you are very lucky that I'm no longer on radio oh. because I would have blocked your music from oh, that wow. instantly. That video alone, ha. Ha. Party. trust me, that would have been it. So you are very lucky. <laughs> and then now that you are explaining what kind of relationship you have with yeah. her, then we, we let that go, you know, we let that go. <laughs> but what was it like when social media was reacting? And sometimes <laughs> as an artist, people don't know what's, what's really on the inside, what kind of relationship people have. Yeah. And when social media just react anyhow, what, what does that, what's that like? Uh, the reaction to me was just 
it didn't get to me because I knew the relationship I had with her. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't really get to me like that. I'm like, ah, ah you never reach like that now. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Tiwa is my big sister now. Stop these guys. Don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no. Basically, and Shopsy, Shopsy, there's something I want to, there's something I want to clear out. Yeah? Yes, I think um, the mindset of, of um, hmm. of, should I say, Africans, social media, social media. Yeah, it's not yeah. reality. Yeah, not their reality. mindset is so so somehow. It's not reality. So toxic. It's not reality. Who, Babs, help me bring like. Um, wipes there. Yeah, keep talking about it. Shopsy is so, so toxic. You know, when I dropped my body of work, Bittersweet 2022, and in less than four months, it was, it's, it went crazy in Mauritius. It went crazy in Mauritius. I had no idea how big I was in Mauritius. People were streaming the music. Then. People were streaming the music. The whole country was streaming the music. Like, I had zero idea how I was big there. Then, I went to Mauritius. For my first ever international show, I went to Mauritius and they welcomed me in the airport. Like, <laughs> <laughs> people will talk, say, wait till they happen. How? When people ask him, when people ask him, that they welcomed what? me like a king. <laughs> Naja, social media. Then, Instagram, Instagram, <laughs> I say Instagram, Instablog picked it. When Instablog picked it, in the comment section, I was going crazy. People were saying, people were saying, hey, he paid for them. He paid for them to come. <laughs> he paid for them to come and stuff. I said, oh, okay, no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Then the day, the night of the show, show to do, I was staring at 5,000 flashlights on my face. 5,000. Did you pay for those too? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I paid 5,000 people yeah, to carry yeah, flash yeah. on my face. It was even 6,000 because there were like 1,000 people outside waiting to get in the thing is one of the greatest blessings for people like us outside of africa outside of nigeria is that we see you know a lot of things yeah. that a lot of people would not have the opportunity to see exactly um when you started to buzz a couple years ago the music instantly went from there from your bedroom that you were creating it from mm into the UK and into France and into Europe like that. Yeah. And a lot of us were listening to the music here. Mm. Straight. But even though you weren't seeing any money yet, yeah. you weren't seeing anything yet, yeah. you already started to amass a fan base. Mm. But the people back home in Nigeria that still sees Majid, you know, maybe still hanging around studios and still being one of the studio rats or whatever, they'll be like, Nah, man. They they don't know what's happening. Exactly. And then they don't have access to the back end numbers too. Mm. That they Mauritius don't. is streaming, they France don't. is streaming, Amsterdam is streaming. When you drop Bittersweet, how that was moving, how the Ooh. records were going. You know, basically with uh, Tiwa. Tiwa Savage, even though it caught a lot of attention on social media, on the blogs in Nigeria and whatever, people don't know that it's also translating into international markets. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why you're here in the UK. Exactly. Because of the fact that your music has transcended and an audience has grown, mm -hmm. you know. Leaping off of the, the single with Tiwa now, and you've dropped an EP before, what's the plan now? Are you looking at a project? Are you gonna put yourself in project mode or are you just gonna keep dropping singles for now to build? <laughs> Uh, so actually, I have a body of work, another masterpiece coming. Very, Is there a date? Very soon. Uh, in two months' time, August. It should be out by August. What, what's label <laughs> saying? What's, what's label saying? Cause <laughs> I see label moving around. You know what I mean? <laughs> Labels moving and shaking. Do we have any date? Label, do we have any date? <laughs> it's we don't have August. a date yet? It's going to be August. August. There's, no, there's no date yet. Okay. It's be August. Since you've dropped, you've had an EP... You've come out of the gate in 2023 with a huge single featuring one of the greats of the music industry in Africa. Yeah. You're dropping another project. Yeah. Are we expecting collaborations? With Ooh, of course. My first body of work with us, I had zero collaborations because yep. it was intentional. But yep. now I think I'm going to have amazing acts on the body of work. Amazing, amazing acts that I enjoy their um, crafts and their um, music. Who are some of the young people that you're listening to? Uh, in the game? I'm listening to uh, 
at the moment. I'm listening to sounds, you know, amazing guys. I'm listening to my guys, basically. My guys around. Not popular artists, but people that you listen to. Yeah, like popular, but unknown. Ah, it's Penny Michelle. Pay that they have a, they yeah. have, they have what it takes. takes to, you yeah. Know? yeah so you need to mention their names so hurt, people can hurting, catch. Man. So who are the names that people you know? need to go and check out because Majid thinks that they're super, super dope. I think you guys should go check out Sounds. Mm. Yeah, Sounds is an amazing artist. I think you guys should go check out uh, Molade. Molade <laughs> is Molade something else. I'll give you, I'll give you a little story. So. Mm. About 10 days ago, like two weeks ago, I just woke up one morning. I saw her video on social media. So I DM'd her and I said, send me five freestyle videos of yours. I want to post five. Mm. Out of the blue. She sent it to me. And she was excited. She sent me like a WeTransfer with five videos. By the, I posted a second video from her. I got a phone call from one of the biggest producers in the music industry in the world. Hmm. It's produced for Ooh. Justin Timberlake. It's produced for Beyonce. It's produced for Janet Jackson. It's the biggest in the world. And he sent me a message with her, with the video I posted, and said, who's this girl? I want to work with her. Damn. Out of the blues. <laughs> Shozy. Mulady. She's crazy. Mulady is out of this world. She's just an amazing talent. Mm. I've worked with her. Like, we've had sections with her. I've, wouldn't, I've done A&R for her, Seth. Because, yeah, I'm an A&R too. I of course, if you're writing and you're, you're yeah, yeah. So We've done A&R's selected body of works, amazing body of works that I can't wait for her to drop. Like, like there are artists in Nigeria mm. that I just want to, like, tell everybody in, in, in the Afrobeat space that, yo, please... Pay attention to these particular people. Try your best. These people are amazing. These people are the future. We are the future. Pay attention. Talk that talk. Like. Talk that talk. So, wait, wait. <laughs> you, you mentioned sounds. You mentioned Molade. Who else? Uh, uh, the amazing acts that um, right now... Uh, What's this? What's this? My nigga's name. Uh, there's a producer that's also sick. SK Baddest. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. So, so this it's is what I'm going to say, and I'm going to use you as a vessel to say this. I know how hard it is for artists to get access to platforms, yeah. to listeners, yeah. to followers. If you don't have finances, it's always very difficult. Very. But when you have talent, genuine talent, that makes it easy for you to create. Create, disperse, create, disperse, create and put it in the world. Don't wait. Don't hold on to nothing. Don't wait. Don't wait for no budgets. Don't wait for nothing. That's why we had SoundCloud rappers. That's why we're going to have Audio Mac rappers because those platforms will eventually open the space for you. Exactly. As much as you can create and disperse, the world is going to hear you. So all of these guys, all the stuff that they've created on their laptop that they keep listening to, Put it on Audio Mac, put it on SoundCloud, put it on YouTube, put it out. You can wake up tomorrow morning and one of them has had over 40,000 hits. Hmm. That tells you that your path is opening. That's how crazy life is now. So we're not going to wait till we have a big budget or a big label. label. Nobody's coming to no, save nobody. Nobody, get up, work. Nobody's coming. So you have to put it out. Um, Finally, on that, you're on a label, right? Yes. And what was the label called? Uh, Dream Empire Music. Dream Empire Music is um, the label that took me and understood that um, you have I have a different path. Like, they saw the vision. They mm. saw the picture I was trying to paint. They saw where I want to be. And they're like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I understand. Because I've, I've been a solo solo artist. Yeah. But when they came, I felt the energy. And I'm like, okay, let's work. You understand where I'm coming from. You see the picture I'm trying to paint. Let's work together. Be my backbone. Let's, let's do this together. And we brought the money as well. 
Isa. No problem. Everything is Dream. What okay. you call it? Dream, dream what? Uh, dream Empire. Dream music. Empire music. <laughs> That's why you're looking fresh. Whoosh. Listen, we're waiting for the next project. Yeah. You said August. Is there a title for this? Uh, yeah, Chairs to Life is the name of the body of work. Chairs to Life. Chairs to Life. Is the name of the body of the work. Yeah. We don't know exactly when it's going to drop, but it looks like by August, it should be touching the streaming platform. Yeah, and I have a specific song for my buddies. Yeah. I, I like me some baddies, you know. <laughs> like baddies. I like me some baddies, Shubzy. Make sure <laughs> you strap up from those baddies. For sure, for and sure. You protect yourself. You know for what I mean? Sure. You don't want no early babies. Uh, you know mm, what I mean? Those mm, things mm, can mm. cost too much money. And now you're you're also in the UK. You're doing a promo run at the moment. Yeah. You're stopping, but you might pop up in places performing as well. Yes, Manchester. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle. Yeah. Um. Uh, Milton Keynes. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember everything, but the cities These, I'm coming. The cities are coming. I'm, I'm coming through. All right, we're gonna put that out, Majid. Um, this is the start of what I hope will be an amazing, amazing one for you. Yeah. The talent is undeniable. Yeah. Um, the backing is undeniable. Yeah. And your placement has has shown where you're gonna go. Yeah. So the most important thing now is for you to put that to action. Turn up on time. <laughs> stay true to your day ones. Yeah, for sure. You gotta stay freaking humble. Give credit where it's due. Give, give, and the rest will be history, ladies and gentlemen. Please give it up for my brother, Maji. Appreciate you, Subshadua. Appreciate you. Nah, Appreciate. Man, you. Thank you so no, much for having me. Nah, thank you. Bro.